it's Georgie the Goblin, and welcome to the official Family of Gamers podcast, the podcast where Andrew and Coach talk all things war games, board games, and much, much more. And here are your hosts, Andrew and Coach. FOG Andrew here from the Family of Gamers. Welcome, war gamers, to an exciting, awesome podcast. We have a few people. We have a whole gr- entire group of people on today. We have Coach. What's up? We got the man, the myth, the legend. He's got 37 nicknames, but we're just going to call him Fabian today. What's up, Fasia? What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I figured, so... We... I. We got a lot to talk about in this one. But if you're new here, this is the podcast dedicated to all things miniature wargaming. And we also have our YouTube channel and uh, social medias in our link tree below. So you guys can check out our other stuff. We post basically weekly on the YouTube channel, stuff on Instagram, uh, Discord server, Patreon. All that is in the description or show notes or wherever you're watching this because it's on spotify itunes and youtube so you can check out all those things there but i figured you know we 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 got back from adepticon and i knew i wanted to talk about this stuff and as you can see from the title of this podcast are our games dying so fabian you had kind of an interesting experience at Adepticon if you kind of want to want to talk about that well I played in the X-Wing World Championships and since they changed over to what the community refers to as rule set 2.5 The changes have been very drastic for me and for many people to the point where it's just not the same game anymore because they've added elements to it that were never there to begin with. So it it would almost be like adding a three-point field goal to a baseball game. It's just it doesn't fit. I don't know. I don't don't watch baseball. I don't know. Well... There's no three-point field goal. So. <laughs> well, I guess that makes sense. Um, so, I really honestly don't know where to begin because there's so many things about the game now that I just do not enjoy. And the few things that I enjoyed about the game were the only things that kept me going. And I had written a list of pros and cons, and my pros were essentially three things compared to my cons so uh, where to begin now, now um, I, I think I think well first of all how did you do in the X-Wing tournament I did absolutely wonderfully terrible oh. I was 0-5 I couldn't get anything going I had two games that I, I should have won but again because of this the way this game is now I I essentially just handed the wins to my opponent because I in 2.0 and 1.0 I would have done X but now in this version of the game you have to do Y otherwise you lose. It's totally plausible for you to lose a game but not lose a ship or lose the game in the very last engagement which is what happened to me in two of the games that i should have won so you you were basically you were basically pretty close and then it was just like this one tiny tiny thing happened at the end and it screwed you over right because previous ways to play you would have just been thinking about killing a ship and another issue i have is the 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 unbalanced nature of factions you can see by the changes they made to the game by the points changes that they've made at times to the game 
that they favor certain factions and I would say just hate others because some factions it feels like if I if my ship moves like this I get this and this ship over here next to me gets this as well I come over here and do this with a ship and these ships get this bonus everybody's got things in certain factions to support and buff their squad but other factions you're lucky if you can get a second action in a turn so it just doesn't it, you're playing basically from way down it feels like at times and I don't want to play those meta lists. I've never been that person. I'd rather play something I enjoy and have fun. And I'm, I'm fine losing as long as I'm having fun, but I feel like I still have a chance. But that's not the way this game plays anymore. Now you're dealing with people who are making lists just going for the, the, the points and the scenarios. And... They don't care about killing things. They're just ki worrying about getting those objectives, and if they kill a ship, great. If not, I'm just going to run. And it just doesn't feel like the same game anymore. I know you mentioned about, like, because, you know, we, we've dabbled into X-Wing, you know, me, me and Coach before, and it made sense to do... A, you know like a dog fight and you're just killing each other but then you mentioned you're like oh now you're holding objectives on the on, like you know in space or whatever and yeah. i'm like uh, uh, what like i'm right. like really like that's kind of weird for like that kind of game you know like yeah it makes sense for something like you know uh test of honor or dead zone you're going in you have to hold the objective because you're a dude you know, you could well, stop well, moving. Game, yeah, games that you don't have to float in space, essentially. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I just thought it was so it, weird. It well, is. Well, but, Faye, what, what's... um, Like, give us an example of a few of the... Because we used to just play, and it was like, you know, whoever <clears throat> killed the most dudes was the winner. But, like, what are some of the new objectives that are kind of... Or, or missions that are... You know, just not good. There, <clears throat> there are four, four uh, missions that they have. One is called Chance Engagement, which is essentially the closest you're going to get to how the game was played before. You're basically trying to kill your opponent. The only difference is in the middle of the map, there is an objective. And if you are the only one within range two of that objective at the end of a turn, you get two points. If you and your opponent each have at least one ship within range two of the objective at the end of a turn, you each get one point. And <clears throat> like previous editions, if you get a ship to below half points, you get half points. And then if you finish off the ship, you get the rest of those points, like previous ways to play. That's the closest to 2.0 and 1.0. Another mission is called Salvage. There's five objectives. You spend an action to pick up the objective. And at the end of each round, if you have however many of these objectives, you get a point. So you could have one, two, three, up to five of them. And that's how many points you would get each round. The only way to get those objectives off a ship is to hit someone with a critical hit. If you get a critical hit, the salvage gets dropped within range one of the ship that had it. Or if the ship is destroyed, it gets dropped within range one of wherever the ship who had it. Then there's another one that's called Chance Encounter. <clears throat> there are, or Chance Engagement, excuse me. There are, I forget if this one is three objectives or five objectives. 
I believe it's the five one where you have to be within range one of an objective at the end of a round and you get a point for it. If you have more ships than your opponent, you get the point. If a ship that's a medium base or a large base is near it, that counts as two ships. So if they have a medium or large base and you have one small base, they get it because it's size two. And then the other one, there's three objectives, and you claim it with an action basically like you're flipping a switch. Like you go, you claim the objective. At the end of the round, if you still have it, you have a point. But you don't need to stay near it. However, someone could come over and they could spend an action to basically flip it over to their side so they now control it. And those are essentially the three, the four missions, with the exception of chance engagement, where you get half points if you get a ship to half. The other ones, you only get points for a destroyed ship. So you could get it down to one hull left, but you get no points for it. So games could be over quickly, or games could just drag and drag and drag because you're only getting one point two points a turn but I've seen games end in you know three turns two turns because they killed multiple ships and they claimed four of the five objectives so before you know it it's over because round two one of my games at Adepticon the guy was up 16 to 1 he killed two of my ships for 10 points and he had claimed two objectives uh, one turn and another two the turn after that suddenly he was at 14 and then 16 so it was like I just told him I'm like I'm done there's no point in continuing damn I th those missions kind of or, you know scenario things kind of sound a little uh poopy if you ask me like i get i get what they're doing i guess you know but for for x-wing i feel like i'd rather just be just trying to kill you like it doesn't seem like a game that makes sense to, to use objectives but i don't know from a tournament standpoint eh, i don't know it's very weird i know you mentioned something about with the tournament like um what was the thing about the time or something that like you something about like it was like you, you had to basically just sit around waiting for like certain games to finish or something I could be wrong on that but well that's not different than than tournaments in years past and during any edition prior to now it was 75 points flat you might finish your round early you still have to wait for everybody else to finish before they could pair for the next round. So that's essentially the same. What's different now is because what people would do, because they knew they had 75 minutes, right? And you had a timer that you could see, oh, there's this much time left. People would slow play. People would run because they know if I lose this ship, I lose the game. So games could end up becoming, oh, there's two minutes left. We're going to get another turn in. I'm just going to run away with all these ships so they can't kill anybody. And you lose the game like that because people don't engage. So I understand these missions were created to force people to engage. But it just creates other problems that people have with the game. Some people love it. Some people have been asking for missions for years, but I wasn't one of them. It's like, you're fighting in space, that's what you're doing. Now, regarding the time thing, to not have that issue where people would run at the end of the game, they created this way of deciding how much time would be in the game. So your baseline was 75 but they would 
roll three dice, and there's a formula that AMG created that depending on what comes up on that dice roll from the tournament organizer, so nobody knows what it is, just the TO, they roll the dice, and the time could either be less than 75, up to three minutes less, or it could be up to 78 minutes, so three minutes more. So there's a window, essentially, from 72 to 78. That, that could be how long the game, the, the, the game will be. And you don't know. There's a clock going up, counting up now. So once you get to 72, you know you have minimum or maximum six minutes left. Or you might just have one minute left. So that's kind of nice because then people, they know how many points they have. It's like, okay, I really need to do this. So you're trying to get rounds in. But the next problem you're discovering is you're finding people that are slow playing even more. You have people, because of the way the game is, they're running lists with five, six, seven ships. So it takes even longer for the planning fl- phase, for moving, for deciding on actions. So that takes all this extra time. I played one person at Adepticon, and she would take a while for each dial to be set, and then she would kind of hem and haw and look at the dials again and again and it's like, I'm setting my dials with less than a minute, and she's there with five ships, but she's taking, like, almost five. So that's all this time that you're losing. And I'm at a point with the game where I just didn't care. Previous to this, I would have been like, you know, Judge, can, can, you, can you see how long she's taking with her dials? Because it's, it's costing me time in the game. So... And that was one of those games where if I had extra time, I might have been able to maintain the win. But because I had to play faster because she was playing slower, I may have made mistakes or done maneuvers that I shouldn't have done because I'm trying to make up for lost time. So, Right. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, it's hard for me to meet or coach really to say uh, say stuff about X-Wing not playing it. But, you know, it is kind of interesting to hear, like, you know, Fabian, I know you've loved X-Wing and you, you've, you've loved the frigging game for years. But then it's like, now all this stuff is happening. Like you said, like, this is, what is it? You said 2.5 or whatever like the fans call it 2.5 and now it's just like it got it went downhill now is it now now who's whose fault do you think this is because was it was it going downhill when it was fantasy flight or did it go downhill from for uh amg i think and it's not even a think it's what i saw between 1.0 and the change to 2.0, there was, even before 2.0 was announced, you were seeing a drop off because people were, people were tired of playing the same things, just dogfighting. People wanted something different. Totally understandable. People weren't happy with the wombo combo, negative play experience things that people were putting together in their lists. Totally understandable. So people were leaving. 2.0 2.0 was announced. It reinvigorated the community, but it also made a lot of people leave because they were like, I'm not spending money to buy a conversion kit to continue playing the game that I've been playing. So a lot of people left. But you got a lot of new people in. You got a lot of people that were there that were very excited. COVID happened, and as Mode, who owns Fantasy Flight and AMG, they transferred all of the the war games, Legion, Armada, X-Wing, they transferred those to AMG since AMG was more of a miniature company. 
AMG got it, and soon after that, they implemented 2.5. So they're totally to blame for 2.5. It was even worse when they first announced it with some of the rules that they made, some of the changes that they made. Yeah, but also, I, I, you know, I don't know who AMG was because remember we were watching, um, they were doing an announcement and they were talking about this new game is coming out called Marvel Crisis, Crisis Protocol. And we were like, okay, it sounds good. And it's done by AMG. So Fan we thought Fantasy Flight was going to do it. And then all of a sudden AMG came out out of nowhere. Nobody's ever heard of them. They came out of nowhere. And then they took over Legion. They took over uh, um, X-Wing and Armada. And then um, they came out with Shatterpoint. So it's like they came out of nowhere. But with, uh, with you know, all right. So people wanted to have missions, which is not a big deal. Um, and actually, it's not a bad thing. Maybe it, it, whether or not the missions are good or not, that's, you know, here them there. What about basically the the mechanics of the game? You know, is there a change to that where it makes the game suck? First, um, AMG was a group of developers that were previously... Sorry, car outside were previously developers for Privateer Press. They were the ones that made War Machine and Hordes during, uh, I guess, their second edition as popular as it had become. It's never been that popular since they were there. They left, started Atomic Mass Games, and the first game they, they worked on was making Crisis Protocol. So they were then handed these three other games. They were basically stepchildren. And I'm of the belief that Armada and Legion, not Legion, X-Wing, are not the types of games that they are used to working on and developing. Those are not war games. Those are more board games. Table, you know, a tabletop board game. Whereas Legion, more of a war game, building painting. That they can, they get that. Crisis Protocol, building painting, they get that. They made that. Um, as soon as they came in, they announced Armada was done. They didn't say it was completely finished, but they just said, there's nothing more for us to create for it at this time. So Armada was essentially done. Legion, they made some changes, and from what I understand in the community, they were pretty happy with the changes they made. But again that's the type of game they're into a war game well so, i mean I, w I was playing legion and um you know the new stuff came out and it was a lot better they they did some good changes to legion i will say that i mean not being an x-wing player just can comment on playing legion uh myself and like three other guys were playing and it was um you know it was some good stuff and they were coming out with good models and and starter kits and stuff so they did it the right way for legion yeah, that's what I've been hearing from everybody that I know that plays it. That it's it's some, it was a good game. It's a little better now, and from what I'm hearing, there's rumblings that a second edition is around the corner. But who knows? Um, as far as X-wing goes, there's so many mechanics that were introduced that are just they're not what the game was like a big part of the game used to be defensively flying to cause your opponents to get blocked not allowing them to shoot which in some cases would also protect you because if the ship can't shoot you you're not going to take damage so that's always a positive but also prevent them from getting an action now you can bump an enemy ship but you can still take a focus action. And on top of that, when you're touching, which they call range zero, you can still shoot a ship at range zero. You don't get a bonus. You don't get any, uh, any benefits that a ship ability might have. But you can still shoot at them. The only thing you can't do is modify your dice. So you can take the focus, but it's really just there to have defense a defense option for modifying. Um, 
And that's something that a lot of people are just kind of like, you made it easy mode, because now it's like, yeah, I might be able to block you, but you can still shoot. So what's the benefit now of blocking somebody? Because not only can you block them and they can still shoot, they can still take a focus action. So where's the benefit? They really made the game more new user friendly, which is fine, but I feel like the game got dumbed down a little because now a lot, it used to be like the joking reaction in the community was if, you know, somebody flew in a way to prevent you from getting actions, from blocking you, this, that, and the other, people would just say to them, we'll just get good, you know? It forced you to think more and get better as a pilot. And now you don't have to worry about that. Now I know I played games where it was like, well, this is what I would do, but then I have to remember, oh yeah, I could just go like this, bump them, and still get a focus action. I'll be fine. So that's one of the things that that I think really annoys people. Um, another thing is, prior to this, you would build your list, and if you didn't use any points, so like say when it was 100, or it was 200 uh, for uh, points, if you were at 195 and your opponent was at 199, the person at 195 has the initiative. So therefore, if we both have ships at the same pilot skill, I'll get to go first. So I'll have the advantage in terms of flying and I'll have the advantage in terms of shooting because I will move first, I will shoot first. So I could fly to possibly block you. I could fly to possibly get out of your arc, you know? Or I could fly, get myself in a position where you can't shoot me, but I can shoot you. So that was a thing. Now, I like this. Now you have to use up your max points. There's no initiative anymore. However, what they do is now it's something that is referred to as road rules meaning random order after dials so basically you set your ships you set your dials and then you roll three dice and depending on what you roll will decide who's got the initiative so you do this every turn so you play your first round your first turn you set up your dials, put them down, you roll the dice again. And now I might have been first last time, now my opponent is first next time. And there's positives and negatives to that. I would prefer if you just did it once at the beginning of the game and it's just that's how it's stuck because that's another thing that I feel slows down the game because now every round you're rolling dice again to see who's going to go first. And then you forget, oh, I went first last time, but now this time you're going first at pilot skill three. So it's another thing that just slows the game down. Oh, boy. <laughs> you okay, Phasia? I, I just... You know what happened? I went yesterday to go hang out with some friends because one of the guys that we hang out with, he's in the, the Coast Guard, and he's getting moved somewhere else. So we all got together to hang out to say goodbye. There also happened to be an X-Wing tournament at the store that they all play at. I had no intention of going to play. I went there. They say to me when I walk through the door, hey, would you like to play? I said, not really. They're like, well, we're a person short. We don't want the numbers to be uneven. I said, okay, fine, but I didn't bring anything with me, so you give me something to fly. So somebody gave me a list they had, and I played two rounds after the second round. And I didn't care. I was just like, I'm just going to joust. I know this is, list is not really a jousting list, but I didn't care. First game, I lost 18 to 1 because at that point, I said, you know what? You won. It's over. Shook hands. I had like 40 minutes to just chill. Then the next round, me and the guy played. Same thing. I think it ended like 16 to 4. And I looked at the game state and I said, okay, we finished this round 
even if I kill that ship, I'm only going to have nine points, and you're going to be up to 19. There's no way I can win after that, because I'm not going to have enough time to get to the other objectives to reclaim them, so we'll just call it here. And then he said, okay. And then he goes, I think I'm going to drop anyway, because I got to go home. I said, well, if you're dropping, I'm dropping. So I dropped too. And I just hung out then with the guys like I had intended to do anyway. But So now, back to the namesake of this episode. Right. Would you consider, with all these problems that are going on with X-Wing, that the game X-Wing is dying would you would you would you consider it to be dying kind of like what i don't know what they like what because you said armada they kind of announced we don't really have anything to put out do you think x-wing is getting to that that point it's dead so just straight up what, just straight it, up yeah, I, I don't care what anybody wants to say it's dead and the consensus from some of the people that I was hanging out with yesterday who were like still like kind of holding out hope about the game in general after this past week what AMG announced to us or to them because I've been there I'm like this game is dead they are all like now yeah it's dead so you know you have one person you know saying oh I'm going to just start playing more Battletech. Another person saying, oh, I'm just going to play more Shatterpoint. Another person saying, oh, they're going to go back to playing 40K. So the game is dead. This past week, AMG essentially announced that there's not going to be any more worlds. It's just going to be what they're calling grand tournaments that are held locally in your areas. So you basically just contact them, tell them you want to have a grand tournament, They'll send you some prize support, and this way, because to them, their mentality is, we want everybody to have fun, which is good. We want everybody to not feel like they couldn't get something because they didn't play well enough, and that's where I go back to the mentality of, well, just get better instead of just giving everyone a participation trophy, and... It's essentially just saying, instead of everybody getting together from around the world in one place like we did at Adepticon to play a game we all love, now it's just stay locally and continue playing against people you play with every week. What's the fun in that? So there's the way they're describing it in the announcement, there's like no more Norton Store Championships, there's nothing the equivalent of a regional nothing the equivalent of a system open it's just these grand tournaments and the way they've been with prize support there's nothing to write home about so it's like what's the point in playing this game anymore like i liked when you would play in a, one of their tournaments before with ffg and if you were top eight in your faction like of the top eight scum players would get this like limited edition just those eight people would get these uh cards for certain pilots or would get uh scum themed um templates and they would have that for every faction so if you were top eight in imperials top eight in rebels they would get those types of things and then if you were top four there was more stuff they would get. And then if you were top two, there's more stuff you would get. And it made it more interesting. Like, you wanted to try and get those things. Now they're just like, play games, get tickets, and then you can just pick out what you want from the prize wall. I, I don't, if I wanted that, I'd go to Dave & Buster's, you know? <laughs> it's like, I want to get something that I feel like I had to do well to earn not just because I played here's a ticket now you can just pick your own prize that'll make you feel better so basically they've they've killed they, they, they've said it's dead without saying it's dead necessarily I guess they're just kind of like oh like like they have they haven't come out and said okay we're, we're just done with it or 
Yeah, they haven't said that in so many words, but from rumblings I've heard from people that know people that are either playtesters or are part of the development team, there were releases that were announced. They like last year at Adepticon, they showed photos of ships that were going to be re-released those ships had order numbers and everything quietly they disappeared from the upcoming release schedule other things that were announced would be coming suddenly were gone so they haven't developed any new ships, and that's what people want. We want new ships. You can't keep just making card packs of pilots we've either never heard of or pilots that already have a card, and now they have another card, and in some cases, they're now on their third or fourth card. So you have, like, four different options to fly Luke Skywalker, each of them with different upgrades or different abilities from the base one everybody has known from the beginning. So you're just giving us like a new outfit, but you're not giving us any new ships. And that's what people want. And that's why people are leaving. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, I think it's it's kind of a shame because you know when we played X Wing it was it was fun and you know I've never really played the second edition or two point five or editions of of X Wing so you know but from what I have played in the past it's kind of I shed a tear for this game you know basically it's dead without it's dead or dying without saying it's dead or dying without them actually saying it you know right. But, and uh, that's the thing. I'm curious h- how the two of you would see the game if I were to run you through a game with the rules now as opposed to what you remember from when you last played, which was probably when, like over five years ago? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's been it, it definitely has been a bit. It's definitely been a bit. I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know if we've played like a full on game in probably longer than that, honestly. Right. I'm saying like you guys probably never even played a two point game. So this game now with objectives and some of the minor tweaks they made to it, you're gonna be like, What's going on? Yeah, yeah. But um all right, I think with that we're we're gonna take a quick uh, commercial break and then we will we will be back with talking about some more games that are possibly dying. Do you need terrain? Do you have a 3D printer? Well, look no further than CorvusGamesTerrain.com, who is sponsoring this episode. They have plenty of STL files for all different kinds of genres like modern, sci-fi, fantasy, and much, much more. So go to CorvusGamesTerrain.com and use code FOGPODCAST15 for 15% off your next order. That's FOGPODCAST15 for 15% off your next order. The link will be in the description. All right, so we are back. And we are going to be talking about another game that uh, uh, we have some... There is no news, and we've been told that it's not going anywhere. But there were little things that we picked up on when we were at Adepticon that uh, lead us to this thing. And we're going to be talking about not Star Wars Armada, but Mantix Armada, the the, uh, ship game, which we all pretty much enjoy. Um, We were at Adepticon. And it was, uh, they didn't have Mantic Night, but it was like, hey, we're all getting together and hang out if you guys want to come hang out. So we did, Andrew and I and Fabian and Ryan, we uh, ended up playing two games of uh, New Halo. And when we walk in, every single 
ship that they had was for sale for you know bargain basement prices it was like 10 bucks a box or something i think it was 10 bucks a box so uh myself and fabian grabbed the abyssal doors and i i grabbed them because they're not in the vault yet and i that's the one faction of ships that i don't have and i said wow they're having a fire sale and one of the guys turned around and gave me a really dirty look is well this is not a fire sale this is a space sale i said all right well what you know i said what the f's the difference because i don't want to curse and he goes well because we're going to gen con and we're going to be pushing halo we want to make room for all the halo boxes and uh, we're you know just selling armada and i turned around and i said uh oh looks like they're killing off the game so what do you guys think well for me this is the problem is that like I really like Armada, you know, Armada made it, um, onto the top five favorite miniature games, uh, list that we did episode was at 1.5 technically of the podcast and also it's on YouTube, but it's a great game. I love the mechanics. I love the wind. I love the cannon, you know, direction, you know, like you have cannons on the side, you have cannons in the front. I love the maneuvering. It, the maneuvering, I think it's all like good. I think the theme is great. You know, we we don't play Kings of War <clears throat> yet, but uh, you know, so it's cool to get like kind of like a you know like a fantasy type game in there that that we're playing and which is which is Armada, and uh, I, you know, like I hate to say it, but I, I feel like, you know. I feel like it is, it, like, they're just kind of slowly going to kill it off, kind of like, I guess, like, Dreadball or something, which I wouldn't say Dreadball is necessarily, like, completely dead because, you know, there's, I mean, there were people in that, that part, that room at Adepticon that were playing Dreadball, so, right, you know, but people the, are still playing is, it. The game is, the game is dead, but the thing was is that those are a bunch of guys that are dedicated and then um, Brian decided to make like an impromptu Dead Zone the podcast. Not, I don't know if it was a tournament or whatever, or just get together and play the game. And a bunch of guys played the game. So that's like us saying, you know, they're not supporting chess anymore, but we still play chess. So but the, or that, that's like us, you know, saying, hey, let's get together and play Mars Attacks. Could be, yes. Which, that's a pretty good idea, actually. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, I I get what you're saying, but, you know, like, Dreadball's pretty much a dead game, but it seems like Armada is, you know, on the way out, because also the other thing we've noticed is, besides the Abyssal Dwarves at the time of recording this video, uh, at the end of April, they're all in the vault everything for armada is in the vault besides like what abyssal dwarves and i think the northern alliance are in there now finally so like they, they're in there now and then probably next month the big ship will be out with the uh what they've been doing is like that in a faction they did skip a month but you know it, it was weird because armada was pretty much a new game and then all of a sudden it's in the vault like everything was in the like like I said, pretty much everything, like 90% is in the vault, you know? Um, yeah. So then, you know, I could... I, 90% which, of Armada's in the vault. Yeah. Right, right. W which is, like, nice in a way, because I can take, you know, 10 gun turtles for my Trident Realm fleet. Uh, you know, you, you can take, a bu you know, 36 hunters, you know, for your dwarves. You could take, like, all these guys and stuff... And the vault is great, but, you know, they don't have every single Dead Zone model in the vault. They don't have every single King's Award models in the vault. They, like, Armada, it's like 90% of the, you know, uh, of the game is in the vault. And then I feel like in, within the next couple of months, the Abyssal Doors will be in there. All the Northern Alliance is going to be, like, everything is just going to be in the vault. And then it's just going to be... Then, then I feel like they're just going to stop printing 
you know, the models and it's like, oh, they're all in the vault. So if you want to play Armada, they're in the vault, you know, I feel like that's where it's going, but I could be, I could be completely wrong, you know? Maybe that's the plan, honestly, because look, I, I, I tried the game the one time it didn't sing with me, but there's things about it I like. And as I've said, I'm willing to try it again, starting at a lower point cost to try and get a better hang of things. But the same thing you said, Coach, you go to Adepticon and you go to the hangout the night after they just had their, it was considered a world championship or something for Armada. But, you know, you just had a, a, a tournament for your event and you go into the hall there and everything for Armada is $10. That's not encouraging in my eyes. To me, that feels like it's done. If you're not selling product, your game is dead. Nobody talks about Battlefleet Gothic from GW or games from GW that they used to make that they no longer make and consider it a living game. It's a dead game. And that's what Armada seems like it's going toward. It's in the grave. It just seems like how long before it's covered over. However, with everything going into the vault, maybe that's their business plan. If they just continue creating stuff for the game and just put STLs out there for you to buy, it's cheaper for them. They don't have to package things. They don't have to cast anything. They don't have to print out cards or tokens or anything like that. You do it yourself, and you get it at a bit of a discount. That's going to be more of a profitable thing for them. So maybe that's the direction they're going with Armada. Well, well one of the things I, when I was talking to Ronnie about it, and I was saying how much I love the vault and stuff, and he said, no, it's, it's, it's a good thing. I like, you know, I like that, uh, um, you know, that, that it's going on. And what he said was, he's like, you know, if you have a printer and you have the vault and, you know, we mail you, you, you know, you buy a set of whatever from us, let's say a dead zone faction of enforcers. And then they need a, you need a, uh, an arm or a gun is broken or whatever. And he says, you know, then we got to go, we got to get it, we got to pack it, we got to ship it to you, which we don't mind doing, but it's so much easier if you just print it yourself. So in a way, it was easier for him. But uh, as far as, as, as what's in the vault, I'll tell you right now, I got it up here so we can kind of do a comparison. So the Basilean fleet is in there, the dwarves, the orcs, the um, sea monsters, which was an expansion that Andrew actually, he actually bought that for me. Um, the Elves, the Empire of the Dust, Salamanders, the Trident Realms, and the Twilight Kin. So all we're missing is the half of the Northern Alliance. We got, because what they usually do is they give you like the beginning pack and then they give you the big guys and the Flyers in the next month, which would probably be next month. So a half of the Northern Alliance and the uh, abyssal dwarves is all that's missing so so yeah i think that's it you know i mean um they didn't put the terrain bundles in there but also too the um one of the thing was for armada they gave us a seas of dread digital rule book in the vault now if you look on the site they only have well they do have Seas of Dread, um, both things there. So everything is still for sale. So, you know, if you think about it, um, when we look at this, let's see the Abyssal Dwarfs. What do we pay? 40 bucks for everything? You paid, what, 50 because you got the Flyers? Favorite? Yeah, I paid 50 because I got the Flyers. Right. So right now, if you want to build, if you want to do the whole thing, the complete bundle is 140. So we. I mean, I got the complete. I got everything but the flyers, and I get I got out a hundred bucks cheaper. So, when the year before we each spent a hundred bucks on complete factions, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, usually at Depticon you get a deal and stuff, but and now I wouldn't say 
that um, one of the things that the game is dying is because they had three tables of Halo demos, but there's other games that we know, like um, you know, Dead Zone, Kings of War, and whatnot, weren't weren't also demoed. It was all just Halo. But then I was watching Salute, and they were playing Ambush, they were playing Dead Zone, and then they were playing Halo also. So, with well, that, I, you know, I really I, I really wanted to demo Kings of War, and you know, it's just it, they they had just three tables of, of halo you know and, and you know we'll kind of get into that too but you know they had three demos of halo i want to do kings of war and you know they had an armada table set up they took it down to do a third halo uh demo so you know well they they did that so that we could do our demo yeah so but you know, ronnie was like Ronnie was like let's get halo yeah <laughs> you blam you're blam ronnie but uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. It with Armada, it's like very disappointing because you know it's a very I love the mechanics. I think it's a very unique system. But again, it's just like you know, is is the game just gonna go to the wayside and you know not not uh, not be around anymore? I don't know. I don't know. Like, is this the start of it? going away or is it not going away and we're looking too deep into it you know I don't know it's, it's really hard to say would you say resin or plastic is, is cheaper to produce because maybe that's part of the reason um well I, I, I'm, I don't know so going on forward we're going to uh, speculate okay so we, we're not experts and I don't really know all I know is is that when Ronnie Ronnie was here he came to our house and he was kind of explaining to us how plastic is made and what you have to do is you have to um, make something then you have to tool it and then you have to get a a, a a, uh, like like a say a, a model print and then what they have to do is they have to injection mold it so like every time we get a sprue there's like there's a mold and they shoot plastic into it with with pressure and it fills out the mold and then it pops out so there's a whole process with that so i don't know but then with resin i know that mantic is doing all their resin in-house so they're they're printing all the stuff in house. Um, I know for a fact that it's a billion times cheaper to sell the SDL files and have a schmo like me do the uh, the printing. So I think the resin in house is better because it's in you know anything you do in house is uh, is better. You know what I mean? You know that's why like with Family Gamers, Andrew and I are trying to do everything in house. You know, almost to the point where we're not going to buy anything anymore. But uh, um, I, I I don't know. I think well, you know, like they're all resin ships, so I don't know if they would be able to be plastic ships. I mean, I'm sure they could be, but I don't know. But I think by them doing the resin ships in house was cheaper for them. Yeah, I I my question is if they're doing, I doubt they're doing resin printers like a 3D printer like what you would have. I wonder if they're still doing it the way it had been done previously, still in a mold. And from what I've understood, those molds are not as long lasting as what they use for plastic. So that could also be a cost cutting thing for all. Right. Now. Right. It, yeah. It's, it's like, a, it's a mold that they dip it into, but um, I, I almost feel that like it would probably be cheaper the way we do it. You know what I mean? I would, like, I would like, think so. You know, like get 10 printers and print off, you know, because when you think about it, the way you, the way a, a resin printer works as opposed to like say an FDM printer is if you put one model on a print and it takes two hours, um, you put 10 models on the bait, on, on the printer, it still takes two hours because it goes layer by layer. Obviously, you're going to use more material, more resin. When you use an FDM printer, if you put one model on there and it takes, let's say, two hours, but now I put 10 models, it's going to take 20 hours. 
because it does a layer, then goes to the next model, layer, goes to the next model, layer, goes to the next model, and so on. When you do a resin printer, it does the whole printing bed at the same time. So you could have 30 models on there, and it'll take just as long as it would if you printed one. So resin printing, as far as speed for miniatures, is much more cost effective. So I don't know, but you know, when we, when we went to, you know, I, I kind of went down a rabbit hole, but with, with this, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Armada had a lot of people in it, you know, obviously me and, Ann, me and Ryan missed it because of uh, parking, but, um, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, no, you know, they didn't do a demo there, so I don't want to do that, but were they doing demos for Armada at Salute? Because it seemed like Salute had um it seemed like the booths had more more room there you know in england so i i don't know if it's as big as adepticon show because i know ronnie and uh, pat were telling us that they, they they get a double booth so you know that's why their their thing is huge but um i, I don't know you know i i was watching some salute videos from on the tabletop you know the beast of war guys and I didn't. I, I saw they were talking about Ronnie, but Ronnie was pushing Halo, which is you know, he's trying to sell the new game. So, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm hopeful. And you know what? At this point, if Armada, if they don't come out with any ships, we got uh, what about ten factions are ready to go, and I have all the prints, you know, because I'm in the vault. So if like say Fabian said, you know what, I'd really like to have um, a complete bundle of dwarves. But I want to paint it myself. Can you print me this, this, and this? I, you know, I'll I'll take care of that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you did do that for me, it would just remain gray probably. But that's another story. Um, salute, I think, is supposedly in like a giant uh, airplane hangar, from what I understand. So it's definitely much larger, and I'm not sure if they even have tournaments there or anything. They may, but I think it's primarily just about the vendors and selling their wares. You know, all things considered. I think uh, I think it's also less people show up. Possible. You know, when it comes to Armada, when I stop and think about it, though, it's not a game that's going to go away because it's something they own and it's part of the Kings of War universe so it's not like it's Mars Attacks where they lost the license or Walking Dead where they lost the license and got it back they own it so if they don't put out anything new for a while or if it just becomes a kind of you know they'll, they'll pr get it printed out when people order it rather than have stock in house they can do that. It's their property. It's their IP, you know? So, unless we start seeing new factions also for Kings of War, there comes a point where there's, like X-Wing, what ships are going to be coming. We would like new ships, but, you know, they, they all float. That's essentially the thing. It's just what do they do beyond just floating? What is their function in the game? So, didn't they have... Uh... Kings of War Vanguard and that died. That was um Well it died because it was horrible. Vanguard. Well yeah. But Right? It was Vanguard? Yeah, Vanguard. But you know, instead of making it better, they just or fixing it, they were just they it's they just killed it. Well, also somebody that was involved, uh thought he was the king of rules writing and wrote horrible rules and tried to ruin dead zone with it but you know and when i was there and he was there i didn't allow that so you know and i remember uh pizza jesus i was talking to him before he passed away may he rest in peace um i was like you know hey you know vanguard's a skirmish game for kings of war i've always wanted to play kings of war you know what he says dude don't even do it man it sucks it's no good it's this and that you know he had his uh that southern draw and i just said i said really it's not that no nah, don't even bother with it they got this fatigue thing and all this ah oh, it's just not good don't don't do it i said okay and if vanguard was such a good game 
why did they come out with ambush which is basically i mean ambush is just a uh, 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 scale down kings of war but it is a way to get into kings of war which is the path andrew and i and fabian have chosen so you know what's uh what's that but also to fabian and andrew I, you know more of fabian because we've discussed this in the past and you've been very vocal about it um um dead zone by far is i would say their number two game behind kings of war and at times, though, when I was on the rules committee and we came out with Outbreak, which was the first book that we worked on, that I worked on, um, it was outselling um, uh, Clash of Kings like three to one. So Dead Zone's very popular. But then all of a sudden, you know, Fabian, you could you can go into this because I know you've you've ranted about this in the past, how Dead Zone is kind of like, well, um, we put out some stuff and we're going to leave you guys alone with it and then all of a sudden it's like oh we need more money and new stuff comes out so i remember you were talking about that you want to maybe kind of go into it like how they treat dead zone a certain way yeah i've always felt like dead zone dead zone is the redheaded stepchild that does better at times than the the golden child which is kings of war it always feels like there's less coming out for Dead Zone than Kings of War. There's more attention for Kings of War, yet Dead Zone, again, not having not played Kings of War, Dead Zone is a solid rule set. There are hiccups with third edition, but it's a solid rule set. That's one that I always come back to. And as I said during Adepticon, whenever we look at a skirmish game, my first thought is always what can this game do that dead zone can't do because it feels like you could do anything you want with that dead zone rule set and play any kind of game so i think man and, and, and we also say too it's like we, we were looking at a lot of games or games are coming out and it's like this this and that and this and that and we're like yeah but why don't we just just play dead zone instead of doing this exactly exactly it's such a solid rule set that it's like why try anything else which you know we don't and it's not a great attitude to have because then you close yourself off to things but when something is that good especially the way 2.0 was second edition was so good that you don't feel like there's an, there's no need to stray you know but when it comes to mantic it just feels like Kings of War hit a high, I feel like, when GW ended the fantasy line. They got a lot of people from that. So good on them. And from what I understand, it's a good game. But it just feels like you could get more attention with Dead Zone than you can with Kings of War. Simply because I think more people would rather do sci-fi than fantasy. Not that there's anything wrong with fantasy, but I just feel like most things that you see out there are more sci-fi based as opposed to bows and arrows, swords and shields. And again, I love that. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you want to hit your market, you push your IP and your IP, one of your strongest ones that you have is Dead Zone. And they keep. I feel like they keep trying to do more with Firefight and I just feel like Firefight just keeps tripping over itself. Again, not having really played it, so I don't know, but just from what I'm seeing in terms of people commenting on the games, I also feel like people are just too too much of a homer for things, and they can't find any fault in anything. And then I feel like because no one finds a fault in anything, I find fault in everything. So... I'm gonna point out the things that seem bothersome, that seem troublesome, that don't seem good. And it's not because I hate it, I just want it to be as good as it can be. I want it to be better. Oh yeah, So 100%. I mean, when you look at like something like the uh, sorry to bring it up, Coach, but uh, the Arias contract, you look at that, 
I mean, we love Dead Zone. We all, all three of us love Dead Zone. But when you have the Arise contract, and they have rules for them, and they bring it back, and it's horrible, check out that battle report if you haven't seen it, but yeah, it, it, it's disappointing. It sucks. It's really, it's just, it's annoying. But you, know? but you know what that I think what that is is that was just a rules committee guy doing something and he's like well I played uh, um, you know his, his whole thing was I played this against uh, one of my guys who knows his orc list very well and uh, I won one game and lost one game and I'm like don't 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 do that because I you know especially me because I'm the one who took the list I've been playing dead zone since day one all right the four of us, we it was well, three of us, one of us is not around anymore. And we bought Dead Zone at Adepticon when it was being like like we were getting it before Kickstarter people got it. So don't tell me I don't know how to play Dead Zone or I don't know or I should have done this or I should have I know I know what I'm doing when it comes to Dead Zone. But I think that was just one of those things that a guy put out and they're gonna put out lists and stuff and and they just did it and it's like, Oh well we did it and here it goes. Or maybe because I've seen this, not to take, you know, not to really blame this guy for writing a terrible thing. It's like, um, all right, we're going to release the Arias uh, crew in the next vault. Write rules for them really quick. And there was no time to do it. It wasn't done correctly. So See, that I, might I, have happened too. I, I, I agree and I disagree. I think it was the opposite way. I think it was like, Oh, no, we want to write I, rules for them. No. So let's all, but let's put them in the vault so we don't have to like re-release them. Let's bring back the Arias guys. You know what I mean? Right. But they, but then you needed rules. So instead of you know they're putting them in the vault, but you can't play them in Dead Zone. You can play them in Star Saga, but to play in Star Saga, you need the Star Saga, not just the minis, but the whole nine yards. You need the you know the book, the 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 cards, and the, the whole nine yards. So the only other game to play with them would be in Dead Zone, and I think it was like a whirlwind because they've done they've done that in the past. It's like we got to write better rules for this. It's, we're coming out with a new, uh, uh, we're coming out with this model. We're re releasing this model. Write rules for it, but make them better. And it's like, okay, when do we have tomorrow? So it, they're you know they're kind of famous for that, you know, as far as w when I was uh, on the rules committee. So that's what might have happened here, but this was just a horrible attempt. I mean, they they they, they suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. Man, Mantic to me has always felt like what you just said. Like they they just rush into the next thing rather than really plan it out and give it the time it deserves. And that's an, one of the issues I've always had with them when it comes to the licenses that they do. Because I feel like they give all that type of attention and love and caring extra time in the oven to a Mars Attacks, to a Walking Dead, to Umbrella Academy, Hellboy, Halo Now. But then the games that they own that's their IP doesn't get the same attention and then the ones that do it's a scale like it's Kings of War then I feel like it's Dead Zone and then after that it, it, it almost doesn't matter because they're just they're doing what makes the most money for them and then going from there now I just want to quickly also touch on um, something like Halo so something with Halo, you you have you have a game that's like coming out. Uh, it's this IP that is huge, probably their biggest IP yet that they've gotten. Like I agree. You know, like Walking Dead. It's pretty pretty big pretty big IP, but Halo. Yeah, Walking. You're... I think Walking Walking Dead was huge for them. And Halo's like a hundred times more than that. Yeah, agreed. So you have that, which is kind of getting the Mars Attacks treatment, where Mars Attacks was a, you know, kind of it was it was a it was a, 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 a you know, not like a, I guess a simplified version of Dead Zone, 
you know, no level well, yeah, above or anything, or you I, know, I, very I think, simplified. I think with Mars Attacks, it was like the easiest thing to do would be to do a simple dead zone, right? You know, and then right. they, and also don't forget that they um, it, 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 in a way it's good. You got to think of it like from how Mantic looks at it because selling models. If you really like Mars Attacks, you would get more factions, but also you would get the Mars Attacks terrain, which can be used in Dead Zone, which if you like Mars Attacks, we could push you into Dead Zone. And all right, so now you know how to play Mars Attacks and you're going to play Dead Zone. Well, guys have two wounds instead of one. And basically everything else was the same. Yeah, yeah. But now when, when you are when you look at that, it's like with Mars Attacks, it's like, okay, we have this game Mars Attacks. It's, simil it's similar to this other game, Dead Zone. Now we can push you to play Dead Zone. Halo, I feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot because they're putting out Halo, huge IP, the biggest IP they've ever gotten. Now, oh, we have this other game, it, it, this other game, Dead Zone. It's similar, but it's 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 you know, uh, it's got some you know more complex rules or whatever. You know, it's got this, that, the other thing. It's like, well, I, I, I can't. Pl can I play as Spartans in that? Well, no, we have Enforcers. Okay, th then I don't want to play Dead Zone. I want to play Halo. It's like, I, I feel like that's what's going to end up happening is that people aren't going to go over to Dead Zone because they're they just want to play Halo. They want to play those characters. Mars Attacks. Now I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say Mars Attacks is not as big of an IP as Halo is. I, I mean, that's just a theory. But what? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that being said, Coach loves that movie. Yeah, I mean, I think we all do. No, don't, don't even get me. So you shut up, because you you you're supposed to watch it. You never did. Hey, listen, I've watched it. All right, what's who who dies? So yeah, so it with with Halo, it's like big ip you want to play dead zone play dead zone well i don't want to play dead zone because i want to play as the halo characters i want to play as master chief i want to play as the you know the elite i want to do this i want to do that so i feel like they're going to shoot themselves in the foot here now but uh, obviously but, it's making them a crap ton of money because it the, because way. it's halo but look at it this way all right so i'm I, i'm on both ends i'm gonna i'm gonna try we want to have a well-rounded argument so i'm gonna bring up some other points on the other side um I was talking with with Rob. He was working the the booth, and the guys were coming to play Halo. And we we all right. So, can we all agree that the Halo rules being based on Dead Zone is actually pretty smart? All right, because you're taking a game that's well established with a solid rule set, and then you're adding Halo to it. Let's not talk about the extras. Let's just say. Halo as a base using Dead Zone is actually a good idea. Do you do you think that? Because I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Fabian, it totally is. Yeah, okay. no, it totally is. The fact that William is like, I want to play Halo, but I've had Dead Zone for over ten years, and he never really wants to play that. Says a lot. Boom. So, number two, you know, so that's also going to prove my point more. Speaking to Rob, and he was saying that they were demoing Halo, but it's going to come out in October. Okay. Okay, well, we don't want to wait for October. I said, well, listen, we have this game called Dead Zone. It's basically the same. Um, you know, we got a, a, a deal on a two-player starter. I, I, you know, they have a few starters. I know there's like orcs or this or that, you know, a few different things. And he said that a lot of people, I don't know the numbers, I don't know the percentages, whatever, but they were do Halo and then buy Dead Zone. So now also you attribute that to like sometimes you play a game you love it and then you just grab the thing but you know people buying dead zone i mean i know us we we pick up games we play those games we don't just let it sit there later on if we don't like the game and we don't play it as much as a different story but you know people were buying the two player starter set for halo i mean for i'm sorry for dead zone to get prepared for halo and you know they were also saying they were selling the terrain packs because of the three by three grid which is very um very unique to dead zone the cubes are very unique as far as movement and whatnot and uh, uh range and everything you don't need a ruler so you know on that end i think 
um, is introducing people to Dead Zone in, in a way. I agree with you, but those were the miniature wargaming nerds <laughs> like us that went to Adepticon. When you have someone like, let's say, the millions of people that have not played a uh, tabletop game or miniature game or play D and D but want to play like a you know want to play something like 40k. Oh well, I love Halo. I love those video games. I want to play the Halo miniatures game. Oh, I can sit here and build terrain and build a board and build like a miniature you know Halo battlefield like in the video game. That's awesome. I'm gonna do that. Oh, we have this other game called Dead Zone. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I want to play Halo. Like, this is... I, I love Halo. I want to play Halo, you know? Like, those people are the people that I feel like are going to be like, well, I don't want to... I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Well, what are Veermen? I don't know. What, what is that? I don't know what that is. What are Forge? I don't know what that is. I want to play Spartans. I want to play Covenant, you know? And that's it. So, that I feel like those are the people that are going to be like, you know, just... I, I don't I don't care about Dead Zone. I wanna I just wanna do Halo. I just wanna do Halo, you know. But I, I think I think two two things. Two things. Number one, the the IP of Halo is going to I, I don't even really think that, you know, um going into it it's like Dead Zone. I think I think the people who like Dead Zone who like uh Halo and then like the game are going to play the Halo game and it's going to be whatever. It could also land on a shelf um, and be a board game, kind of like uh, Mars Attacks was. You know, we play it when we play it, and that's it. I think that, like, maybe a positive thing is it might be a few, like, like um, people want to transition into Dead Zone or, like, get into miniature war gaming. You know what I mean? It's like maybe this is a video game guy or somebody who likes Halo starts playing this and gets the miniature wargaming bug like we did. Okay? But let's say a sliver, a small offshoot of people decide to go into Dead Zone. You never know. That might triple the amount of people who are playing Dead Zone. You know what I mean? Because I think Halo is going to be a huge seller. I mean, we did videos and like overnight they 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 did great. So just with that, um, it's showing you that will it transition people into Dead Zone? Hopefully, but I don't know if I don't know if that's going to happen. But I don't even think they really care. It's like you know, let's get this like it's the money grab, not not the money grab, but it's it's smart. It's smart. Let's take the best game we have and put a beloved IP in it and sell the crap out of it and I think that's what's going to happen and if a few people come over great if not yeah you know what they did what they had to do but I, I think maybe even our, if our friend group some dude really likes Halo and now with us Dead Zone fanatics might be an easy transition for him or her yeah I I was saying at Adepticon that I feel like I don't know at what point it, I started feeling this way about Mantic, but I think a lot of the things they do when it comes to the licensed properties, it's for short-term gains that don't probably always equate to long-term gains. I think, like, they did Mars Attacks first. That might have been their first IP. Just to see, or, you know, you get a, a, a less expensive IP, something that you can like you said, an easier dead zone and get people in and then maybe they transition to dead zone. Then you get another IP next, a little bigger than that. They got The Walking Dead. It was huge. But then I feel like they stumbled doing something like Umbrella Academy. Not as not as big as some people thought it would be, I think. It didn't really do anything as far as I can tell. Hellboy was huge, but that's a board game. It's not a it's not a war game, but it's still a good game. And now it, it dun dungeon crawler more of a, more of, but yeah dungeon crawler what, board game yeah and don't forget fine. worms yeah, don't Halo, forget worms well worms hasn't come out yet we don't know yet right. retail but, but it, that's it, a board game too so I think you'll be fine and that's gonna be more mass market appeal Halo I think what benefits it's the biggest IP I think that they've had and I think 
what benefits it is the fact that it's on the dead zone grid system because it feels like you're playing deathmatch or capture the flag it feels like a video game and the question is will that translate for people to playing dead zone they might have bought the dead zone starter but they might have only bought it to have terrain so when de the halo comes out they can start playing we don't know how much of that will translate to players sales for dead zone it's going to increase but is it going to be a long-term thing and then as i also said at adepticon my fear is long term if they lose the ip do those people that came over for halo stick around for dead zone because if there's nothing new coming out to halo once again going back to dead games if nothing new's coming out why am i still going to play this game you well, might love it but some people want to play it competitively and if they can't play it competitively anymore they're not going to play stuff is going to come out i spoke when i spoke to ronnie about it he said, look, you know, we already have a plan for next year of stuff coming out because they have the IP for five years. So I think what he's going to do is kind of, I don't want to say milk it, but like take advantage of the fact that he has it. And they're going to come out, they're going to come out with a bunch of new stuff. Will it transition up into firefight like size game? I don't know if they're going to do firefight. They better write better rules because I know he keeps touting the fact that, uh, they won this award, but that was on the tabletop. It wasn't uh, anything. So that's like us, you know, top five games, you know, Dead Zone 1. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I think before we finish, do you think, you know, I'm going to ask, I'll say Fabian, then Andrew, then I'll talk about, do you think that Halo is going to kill Dead Zone? Go ahead, Fabian. Do I think it's going to kill it? My worry is that they they decide to change things in dead zone for another edition to make it more like halo because i feel like halo might not have the same strategic depth that dead zone does so that's kind of my concern granted as i said in one of our other videos i'm excited for what's going to come out after the initial release what Ronnie told us when we were at Adepticon. So they're thinking further ahead. They're thinking bigger. There's going to be more. Okay, I'm excited to see that. Not the biggest Halo player ever, but it's exciting to see, and it's something that looks cool. I'm willing to give it a shot. So I hope it doesn't kill Dead Zone, but I don't see how it could because then again, you lose the license for, I, for Halo, what are you going to say? Oh, we know we don't have Halo anymore, but we we have Dead Zone. People are going to be like, ah, screw you. You gave up on it. Why should I keep playing it? For me, do I think it's going to kill Dead Zone? Uh, in the broad scheme of, the, of things, no. But in my head, in my mind, yes. Because I feel like what is going to end up happening is that they're going to do something where Halo is going to, you know, they're going to make basically Dead Zone with Halo rules so that those people from Halo can go over, and then I'm going to be like, but I, I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like these things, you know? So in my head, it might kill it for me, but not for everybody else. But I, I obviously only time will tell. But which, see, see, which would you rather play, though? Not that we've played a full Halo game, but the question becomes, which is more entertaining for you? Dead Zone, which you've played for 10 years or so, or Halo? Right. I mean, from what we've demoed and played at Adepticon, I'd rather play Dead Zone, you know? Well, well all right, so I, I have a completely different take on it. I think this is good, and I'll tell you why. Number one, when we played Halo, there's only a few differences, okay? So um, one of the differences was the shields, which is um, like like temporary shields, which I didn't have a problem with. Um, number two was they had guns that 
interacted with the shields and could take them off almost like ap um the respawning to me it's just it's just a mission that respawns so that's a way for you to justify the fact that you're only playing with two or four guys all right um spartans rushing in give you a plus two instead of a plus one bring back the like i said in the in 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 uh a bunch of other videos if we bring back the brawler rule in dead zone where if somebody has a brawler rule like say the spartans they rush in they get a plus two instead of plus one when you're entering the queue for combat so that's not a bad thing i always thought we should bring back the brawler rule i thought that like say sergeant howlett or you know some of the uh you know the arias guys should have had uh uh something like that so i think that was a, that's that's a plus as far as like the respawning, that would be a cool mission where you only take, let's just say, let's say 50 points, but you take elite guys, no force org, and you can take as many as you want. So uh, the Spartans to me, when we were playing, I just looked at it as another faction. How can I transition this into dead zone? And it's not really a terrible thing because it's already in a dead zone rule set. How would they, how would they, uh, match up you're like well you know the spartans are so good how are they going to match up against let's say the enforcers or the forge fathers or the asterians well very simple they're really strong really good just make their points higher you know it's a very easy transition so i see this as a dead zone player i don't really care if they bring more people into dead zone i would love it but i'm not looking at it. i'm selfishly looking at it because this is my game this is the game that i love and that we've made over 150 dead zone videos on our channel so, you know, we're invested. We, we know about this game. I just see it as another faction. And if somebody wants to like, oh man, what's that? That's Halo, let me play it. I would bring them in and I wouldn't even show them Halo. I'd show them how to play Dead Zone with Halo models. And, you know, then it's like, oh yeah, you know, you, you know, are right, gonna play again. All right, well, I'm gonna have my Spartans versus my Orcs, my Marauders. Okay, oh, I'm gonna have, uh, you wanna play Halo again? Yeah, yeah, I, oh, you know what? I'm gonna bring my Forge Fathers against you. Oh, I'm gonna bring my Kalishi against you guys. Hey, what, what's with all that stuff, man? I kinda like these rats. I think that's the way to, to transition people. But you know what? If a person comes in and they wanna play Halo against Dead Zone, no problem, bring it. Strategically, it's the same. The only thing that's not strategic is there's not enough terrain on the board. That's where it gets strategic in Dead Zone. How many times have we seen on Facebook or people complain about Dead Zone's not a good game and they have like uh, uh, two two pieces or three pieces of terrain and they're playing their wives. So, you know, it, it doesn't get strategic until you have all that terrain on the board. I mean, look at our boards are filled, filled with terrain. That's, the, that's Dead Zone and I think that's what Halo should be. That's why I went for the bigger package because I want more of that terrain on the board, you know, but I'm going to put more bridges. I'm going to put more scatter out there. And I'm going to play Halo as if it's just another faction in Dead Zone. Um, there's only, I can think of five different rules in opposition to Dead Zone, but I think it's actually not a bad thing. You know, adding a few extra rules to Dead Zone and making a 4.0 to me is not a bad thing. That shows they're invested in it. And maybe, you know what? Come out with some new Reb models. Come out with some new, um, I don't know, like, like, uh, you know, they're saying they're coming out with Macedon or they're coming out. Well, come out with some new dudes, like maybe make different Macedon models, make different, uh, um, you know, make different uh, units for the stuff, you know, right? Andrew, Rebs have not have love for God knows how long. Stop making those crappy models and make better models. You know, the, Ronnie was saying that, you know, Mantic had the reputation of having the, the the models that aren't good. Well, make make them better now. Bring them out in Dead Zone for guys like us who are going to definitely buy them. And then when the Halo guys, if if ten percent make the transition, it it's going to be huge for them. I just see Halo is going to transition because eventually, it's I don't know what the license is. I don't know the legality of it, but I'm telling you, they're going to be in Dead Zone. That the the Spartan and the uh, um, Who's the bad dudes? What's what's their name again? I'm sorry. The I'm, Covenant. The Covenant, right? Which is which is cool. They're definitely going to be in Dead Zone as a faction, um, on par with it. Or if the Halo rules are better, they're going to go up. But like I said, Halo is just Dead Zone with a few extra rules in it. It's it's not. I don't think it's the end of Dead Zone. I think this is a way forward, and it's a good way to do it. You know. 
hopefully it pays off. I, I can't see it not. I, I'm very I'm very optimistic and positive about this. I think it's a good thing. I can't wait to get my set in August. Uh, October, I'm sorry. So worms in, worms in August, and then we'll play the hell out of that, and then we'll get Halo in, in October, which will be right in the middle of football season, so we'll have to wait. But Worms you know. for life. Anyway... Yeah, but uh, if, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I think I made the best points out of everybody, so I'm gonna just leave it there. Uh. uh okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think you're not wrong. I think it's just like I said earlier. I think it's a short term thing, maybe that may not see long term success. Not that it's gonna be a failure, but how much of it will translate. You're not wrong, because I know people from local that no interest in Dead Zone, but they saw Halo at Adepticon, and they're like, I'm in. Now, will that translate to Dead Zone is the question. Well, that's that's our job. You know, I, I know the guys you're talking about, and I like those guys. Let's play a bunch of Halo games, but then it's like, you know, you know the rules really well. Let's try this. I, I'll make a list for you. I'll make a, you know, a... a, a, a two aberration maze on list and you'll see how cool that is and you know and it, it's also if those guys because those guys you're talking about are war gamers they there's a really good chance that they would move into let's say dead zone and then we have we just increase our number of players yeah but uh any uh anything else to add to wrap up dead zone's not going anywhere don't worry about it stop stop being silly I'm excited. Either way, I'm excited for what's coming in the next five years. So, from Dead Zone, from Halo, Kings of War, maybe Firefight. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, you know, in exactly one year, we'll film the the you know this an episode of the podcast again, and then we'll see what happens. But uh, that is it, guys, for this episode of the podcast. Um, we have our link tree in the description or show notes it has our link to our YouTube channel. We post weekly on there. We have access, uh, links to our social media pages, our Patreon, our discord server. Uh, if you're not already on YouTube, you can become a channel member. You get access to exclusive content videos, all that stuff early, uh, earlier than everybody else. And, uh, that's about it guys. So we will see you in the next one. Unfortunately, this is the end, but don't worry, they will be back next month. And you can check out all the links in the description or show notes for more Andrew and Coach. See you next month!